This is D, it's Friday morning. Two nights ago, then, after dark, I returned to the studios here and I met something of a Chester enigma. He goes by the name of Tony on Facebook. That's almost certainly not his real name, though. People who follow a certain local Twitter account, the name of which I can't broadcast, will definitely know who I'm referring to, and there's lots of followers, 10,000, in fact. I've just tweeted the details now off the D106.3 account as to who my guest is this morning, Recorded two nights ago, I started by commenting to him that this Twitter account is one of the biggest and certainly one of the most talked about in Chester, and I asked when and how it all began. It all started, it was March of, of last year, and I've got to say that the account was actually created by a really close friend of mine. I won't mention her name, she knows who she is. She created it as a, as a little joke, basically. I, I was a fan of a, a similarly named uh, London-based account. And I used to like go going down to London, taking some crazy pictures, and you know just exploring exploring things really. And she, I don't know what what got into her head, but she just thought, oh, I'm going to do this. She created this Twitter account just for a laugh, for a little private joke between us. And you know it just got completely out of control very very soon after that. So this is a brand, is it? It's not specific to Chester. There, there is a, a London account. I think that was the original inspiration. For, for this, yeah. Just the name, the content of our account to that one is, is a little bit different. So I was going to ask you why you chose the name that yeah. you chose, because yeah. uh, I've referred to your account many times on yeah. my show over the last yeah. year or so, but yeah. I can't actually credit the account. Yeah. Um, why did you choose that name then, other than there was already a similarly that, named that, account that in London? That was it, and it was just a bit, a bit of a Mickey take, really. Um, maybe I was a little bit bored, I don't know, but again, my, fr my friend, she started off and she eventually sort of passed it on to me because she didn't have time to keep up with it. Uh, but it was never meant to, to denigrate Chester. We weren't trying to paint a vulgar picture of Chester or anything like that. It was just meant as a, a little private joke between two friends and then so suddenly you're noticing your, your followers are coming on and on and on and and then things are happening and you're reacting to that and you're finding new things every day. You're finding little bits of graffiti, weird things are happening. And then from that, it was, you know, evolution, not revolution. Given what's happened to the account yeah. over the last 18 yeah. months, do you regret calling it that? Do you wish you'd called it Ooh, something else? It, no, I, I think the name has given it a sort of notoriety. It's made people take attention of it and it's made people look at what we're actually saying. And I think when it first started, again, it wasn't ever meant to say anything bad, and it's never said Chester is that or this. It's just said this, that's just the name. You could call it anything, really. I don't think that would... The content of it would be exactly the same. And um, We're not trying to offend people. It's just the way it is. And there's a lot of people who are following it. It seems to be popular. And, you know, I, I wouldn't really want to change the name because it's an established brand now. We've got a lot of people who are buying our T-shirts, for example. And you're wearing one today. Wear, I've got one on, yeah, available in a, in a, a retailer Range of manners. in yeah. town. Yeah. And uh, we couldn't really change the name. I think if we did that, it'd be a bit like the Consignia Royal Mail debacle or the Starburst Opal Fruits. Don't We've even got... go to Marathon and Snickers. Exactly, exactly. We've got an established brand. Right. And I just don't really feel the need to change so it. So that was going to be my next it's question, is it ever going to change? I, well, it, I've been asked to change it by various people because they find it offensive. To me, it's it's a mild... Uh, people say swear. To me, it's more of a slang, a slangy word. And the, our intentions are good. And I think that all of our followers, they do get it, I, I would say, anyway. Well, you've got 10,300 10, that, followers. That's, that's right, yeah. That's in 18 months, so that's yeah. only a couple of thousand fewer than this radio station has, and we've been on wow. the air for 11 years. So, wow. you know, how do you get... How, how, did, how did you do that? I, Tell us I your can't, secret. I don't know. It just sort of seemed to pick off very, very quickly. Um, people became aware of it. I And I really, as it got on and on and on, I immersed myself in Chester life. And when I started the account, I was a little bit negative about Chester. I thought Chester was just like a picture postcard. It was very pretty to look at, but there was nothing underneath. And we all know the well-documented problems of the city, the, the cinema, the theatre, the parking, the traffic, etc., etc. And then I thought, is there stuff going on? And yet, there definitely is. 
And I, I've I've written about it in my blog. I've been to different events. I've gone to see different bands. I've met so many great people involved in lots of great enterprise all across Chester. And it it's changed it's changed my life, and hopefully it's changed a few other people's lives as well. Have you worked out who I'm talking to? I'm sure you know. I've posted details on the D106.3 Facebook page and tweeted from the radio station's Twitter account. The guy who runs that local Twitter account, the one whose name, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to broadcast. You too, the miracle of Joey Ramone. So my guest this morning, recorded a couple of days ago, runs perhaps the most talked about Twitter account in Chester. You might remember the whole thing was front page news last year when Councillor Mike Jones spoke out against the account and that's what we discuss next. The, the confrontation with, with Councillor Jones, I mean, that probably a case of big mouth strikes again there, but I'm sure, you know, I've got no hard feelings towards Mike and probably now he, he may regret it, but... Um, when that happened, that really crystallised our role in, in, I would say, in, in Chester's culture. And we were there. We were actually tweeting positive things. And I, I, by that time, it was just me. And I was accused of driving away investment. Uh, I should be ashamed of myself. And that, that hurt. But, you know, we got a lot of publicity out of it and a lot of followers. Presumably, so. that was because of the name of the account rather than the content. Yeah. I'm not, at that time. At that time, yeah. Um, but again, if people had actually looked at what I'd been tweeting, they would have seen that those allegations were, were false. It does seem to me now that a lot of the great and the good of yeah. this city, both in the yeah. public and the private sector, look to you. I, I would say that. I don't claim to have any sort of leadership role. I'd, I'd like to think people pay attention to what I'm tweeting. People do ask me about what's going on. And I, I, wel I welcome that role. Um, it, it does keep me very busy. I do have a full-time job, so this is sort of a hobby to me, but it's just gone massive and, and bigger and bigger, and it's, it, it still feels like a bit of a dream to me, to be honest. What do you think your Twitter account... I know you've got a Facebook yeah. profile as well, but yeah. it's really the Twitter account that we're the talking Twitter about, The Twitter account is, is the main focus, yeah. What do you think it achieves for this city Ooh, that, that other organisations may not... I think it brings people together. It's, it provides a, a forum for people to talk about issues that are affecting them. Um, it's accessible. It's free to use, so anyone can get on there. Anyone can put a tweet out. I can retweet. People can find out what's going on. I'd like to think that at, at the very basic level, hopefully it'll just make, make someone laugh or make someone smile. It's certainly helped me uh, when I've been feeling down at times to, you know, plod on with stuff. But def the forum aspect and the, f the networking as well, I think that's a key part. And information as well. I know a lot of people... Uh, people tweet me and say, there's nothing going on in Chester, what do we do? And, and I can come back and say, well, this is going on, this is going on. And my diary is full of, of stuff that is going on. Well, there is a lot going there on There is a lot city. going on. Every weekend there's something different. Yeah, and you're at all of these events. Now, how do you manage that? <laughs> how, you've got photographs of, of every single event going on. Mo most of them I am there. It's careful planning. There's a couple of people that help me out when I can't make it. Ah, so it's not always you. 99% is me, but there's have some family and friends that do help out, so thanks but to those it's, guys. It's very rare that there's a, an event that, that you're not at. I like to be represented everywhere, yeah. Yet nobody or very few people People know who you are. A, f a few people know, obviously my friends know, and I don't know the, the percentage, but yeah, I like to keep it as an enigma. Um, that adds to the mystery of the account and it makes it just feel a bit more like an everyman. Because if, if it was just me, if it just said my name, you know, you could call it anything, Bill Carr, Tony Hayes, it could be called Jamie Hall in Chester or anything like that. It's, it's really just about everyone. And I, I try not to make it personal. Obviously, I am a human being, so feelings can slip in. But it's I, I try and get to as many events as I can and just show people that, you know, there's, this is all part of life's rich tapestry, basically. So would you describe yourself as a conduit for people in this city yeah. to talk about issues relating to this city, not just controversial issues, but things that are going on, and, and for, you know, for it all to be done in one place so people can meet each other in the social so media world, if you and like, I and know, interact? I know of many people who've met through this account and have become really good friends... And I've, I've met some, some great guys through this. 
and the people in the businesses that I work with, you know, I've made some really good contacts uh, and it's just opened my eyes to how much is actually going on in this city. Fans of the Smiths will have noticed him sneak in a few Smiths song titles there. There's more to come in the next few minutes. I was so high, I did not recognize it on me. It's George Ezra, blame it on me, talking to the guy this morning. Well, actually, I spoke to him two nights ago. We're playing the interview out this morning. The guy who runs that Twitter account, you know the one, the big local account with the name I'm not allowed to mention on the radio. Here's the final part of our conversation where we spoke about another aspect of the account, his blogs about local people. The last one I've done is about a lady that volunteers for the homeless. I read that the other night. Quite um, a moving blog, it was, that, actually. It was. I was very moved and privileged to actually speak to this lady. Can you talk about her while you're here? Yeah, her, her name's Annie and she's a volunteer at uh, the Harold Tomlin's Day Centre. And uh, I've, if you read the blog, I don't really want to say on air, but she's had a, you know, she had a difficult start to her life. Mm. So she's just a normal person yeah. doing, you know, extraordinary things in Definitely. this city. And there's loads of them about there. If people just look out and see what is going on, um, I think... The, if you take the name, you could call it anything. You could call it Wonderful Chester. But if but you'd have called it Wonderful it Chester... It would it never have kicked off in this no, way. No, it wouldn't have become... So it's just, to me, it was just like a completely random flash of lightning. Yeah. And everything was there at the right time for this to happen. And, you know, 99% of what's happened over the last year and a half has been really, really good. So the anonymous element yeah. is, is important, that's yeah. staying. Yeah. The controversial name of the account that yeah. I can't say on the yeah. radio, despite having here, that's staying. Uh, I would say so, yeah, unless unless something major happens. But the, the way it's going, we're still amassing followers at quite a good rate. Mm. And I, I'm not sure what the future holds, really. It's been suggested to me that if if the name was changed, it would become more commercial, more people might follow, but... I don't want to make it very bland. I want people to follow it because they like it, not not because of what the name says. Before you ran this account, yeah. have you always been passionate and interested in Chester, either, you know, in a positive way or in a negative way? Um, or was it just before this account? Was it just the place that you happened to live? Yeah, I would say it was just where I lived. I, I, I liked it, but maybe before I started, I was a little bit bored, annoyed with it, the way things were going and the, the cinema closing... And you know you got you got the sense that this was a city going nowhere fast, um, but as we know, these things do take time. And now when I'm looking at Chester, I got a completely different view of it. And he, just from all the places that I've been to, I, I could give you a big list. You know, I went on a Civil War tour. I've been checking out the local bands. I went to a Deaf Cafe. I don't know if you've ever heard of that one. It's the on Deaf Cafe Brook Street. Yes, yes I went there yes. with, a, with a, a friend, and it was amazing. And just one of the really weird things that happens, but a, a great thing. A lot of random stuff goes on, and you look at it and you think, "Wow, life's pretty fascinating at times." And without the impetus of this account, yeah. you wouldn't have gone to half of these things, would you? Highly unlikely. As most people don't. Yeah. I suppose. But now it's, I suppose you feel it's your I, role, almost responsibility yeah, to do, go and publicise it. I do feel them. a responsibility to go to events, yeah. And it keeps me really, really busy. But it, it's in a, good, in a good way, because this, this account's definitely changed me as a person. And we don't know what the future holds with it, but it's been a, it's been a great journey to go on. What do you think about what's happening in the city? You've already mentioned yeah. the cinema. Um, yeah. There's obviously the issue with the theatre. Yeah. There's, the, there's the roadworks. Um, as you know, uh, there are people on social media and in real life who yeah. put the blame for everything squarely at the door of this current council. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I don't want to draw you on your political proclivities unless you want to share them. But, yeah. but you know, what do you think of the state of play in Chester at the moment? Compare it to five years ago, ten okay. years ago. Well... I do. I try to stay out of politics, and I don't want to um, don't want to be seen to promote any political parties, anything like that. Because I do approach it from a, a neutral viewpoint, and I always try and tweet both sides of an argument. Um, so, don't really want to say too much about that. But I, I would say it looks like there's some improvements. There's still a lot of work to be done, and there's a, there's definitely a lot of frustration in Chester. That's what I feel. That's the main thing about how long things take. If you look at certain sections of the walls that have been, you know, all fenced up or whatever for 
three or four years, I think that that generates apathy and cynicism is that, towards the council. Is that not the same in every in every city, in every local authority? More than likely, yeah. Yeah. So let's run through a few issues then. The yeah. cinema, the theatre, yeah. the cultural centre, as it's going to be called. Yeah. It's going to be open two years from now. We'll yeah. probably be there, me and you together, this time Hope, in 2016. Yeah, hopefully I'll get invited to the opening night. But... <laughs> Where do we send the invitation, though? That's the thing. Uh, good, good thing, bad thing? Yeah. To me, it looks like a good thing. Northgate know. development. Difficult one. Um, you know, if it brings investment in, I'm all for it. What about but the building on Delamere Street? Looks all right to me, but not been inside. Shutting so. gore stacks, pulling down the ship victory. <sighs> Don't want to get get to all on that one. That's for that's for the followers to decide. I just want to present the arguments, and other people can say say what they think about that. Okay, we alluded to the controversy with uh, yeah. Councillor Mike Jones yeah. almost exactly a year ago, I think. Uh, earlier yeah, on, you were a much, much smaller account then. It was about five thousand back then. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're, you're, you're more than double that. Yeah. Um, Mike obviously um, felt that you were denigrating the city. Yeah. Uh, you've already said that made you feel quite upset. I d- did take it very personally. And, uh, I mean, you were headline news in all was the a, local papers. It, it was weird the next day getting contacted by local, local press saying, we'd like you to talk about this. Again, very surreal. How did in, they contact you? Did they, t- uh, did they well, tweet uh, you? Well, there's, there's a few of the journalists I know quite well... Um, and they, they did. One of them rang me, and the other one uh, was tweeting me yeah, about it. Um, but again, from someone who's just living a, a pretty normal, humdrum life, it was very, very weird. And I guess flattering to get some attention, but I just felt, what is going on here? It was, it was very, very strange to think that this account was created as a laugh. I was getting comments on, you know, the most powerful man in in, in Cheshire. It was very strange. In Cheshire West, at least. Cheshire West, we're still, yeah. We're still separate boroughs at the moment, yeah, Cheshire West it, and Cheshire East. <laughs> that was a political, political comment, I political think. Political comment, sorry, you just, everyone. You just sneaked that one in there, didn't you, when you thought we weren't listening. <laughs> so, um, what of the future? Well, I'd like to carry on with the blog. Again, keep meeting different people. And I would like to get involved in more sort of charity work... Um, raising the profile of, of things that are going on. At the moment, as you know, we've got the Lego display, and that, that's been a really nice development. That's I in just, Chester Market. Uh, that's in Chester Market, and I'm actually working there with some of the traders to promote the market, which is a very ironic twist of fate when you consider that the council was actually denigrating me in the early days. Um, we're actually now there on, on council property. We've got a very nice Lego display of many different parts of Chester and that's raising money for the for the hospice. So if you're in in the market, go and have a look at that. We're adding bits to it all the time. At the moment there's a big roadworks display and a and a traffic jam. <laughs> That's another political comment, everybody. <laughs> uh, the, I'm, I'm very surprised that, you know, when you're sort of walking down Eastgate Street or something yeah. at half past eight at night and yeah. you're there taking a photograph of a discarded umbrella that's been blown inside <laughs> out, that nobody, nobody has ever come up to you and said, are you at e- yeah, Chester? Well, hidden, it's hidden in plain sight, isn't it, really? People don't aren't looking. People might expect me to be a different person than what I actually am. I'm glad you finally agreed to come in and talk to us. Thanks, Gavin. dying to get you on the show for ages. And uh, thanks for... Occasionally I might nick one or two things off your account and put them on the show. So uh, although I do try and credit you, it's very difficult when I can't actually say the full account name on the radio. But uh, thank you very much for that. And um, we look forward to the next 12 months in Chester. Thank you. I know it's over, but I just want to say a big thanks to all the followers and... I really mean that, so cheers, guys. And if you don't follow the account, I'm going to tweet again now uh, who I've just been speaking to. So if you follow us, then you can click on and and follow this guy who's got a lot to say about the city that we all live in. Thank you very much once again for coming in. Thank you.